we're going to be comparing electric fields with gravitational fields. Electric fields are due to objects with charge, whereas gravitational fields are due to objects with mass. And electric field strength is given by force per unit positive charge. Whereas for gravitational fields, gravitational field strength is force per unit mass. So the field strength is equal to force per unit something. The units of electric field strength is Newton per coulomb, whereas the units for gravitational field strength is Newton per kg. The direction of an electric field is the direction which a positive charge will move, so that is away from positive and towards the negative. Whereas the direction for a gravitational field is always towards the centre of mass. Both a point charge and a point mass have radial fields. So a point charge is a charge of point size. Point mass, a mass of point size. And the electric field strength for a point charge is given by this equation. So the electric field strength is directly proportional to the charge of the object, but it obeys an inverse square law with the distance away from the object. Gravitational field strength for a point mass is given by this equation. So the gravitational field strength is directly proportional to the mass of the object. But again, it obeys an inverse square law with the distance r away. And due to the inverse square law relationship with distance, electric fields and gravitational fields have an infinite range. That's because E will equal zero and G will equal zero as R approaches infinity. The electric force between two point charges is given by Coulomb's law. So the electric force is directly proportional to the product of the charges and it obeys an inverse square law with the distance R between the charges. The gravitational force between two point masses is given by Newton's law of gravitation, this equation, where the gravitational force is directly proportional to the product of the masses. And again, it obeys an inverse square law with the distance r that separates the masses. The proportionality constant for electric fields is given by k, which is equal to 1 divided by 4 pi epsilon 0, where epsilon 0 is the permittivity of free space. So if the two charges q1 and q2 are separated by free space or vacuum, we would have this constant. If the two charges are separated in air, the permittivity of air is approximately equal to the permittivity of free space, so you can still use this value. The proportionality constant for gravitational fields is given by this capital G, which is known as the universal gravitational constant. The nature of electric forces for Opposite polarity charges is attractive, whereas charges of the same polarity is repulsive. So like charges repel each other, unlike charges attract each other. However, gravitational forces, masses always attract each other. Charged parallel plates produce a uniform electric field. 
and that's from positive plate to the negative plate so you can see it's a uniform field by the equal spacing between the field lines and the equation for electric field strength for a uniform field is the voltage the potential difference between the plates divided by the distance separating the plates the gravitational field strength is uniform near the Earth's surface, where the Earth's surface is considered flat. And near the Earth's surface, the gravitational field strength is equal to 9.8 newtons per kg. For a charge moving perpendicular to an electric field, it will follow a parabolic path. And this is similar to a mass that is projected horizontally from the Earth's surface. So it's being projected perpendicular to the gravitational field. The charge is experiencing an electric force which is acting vertically downwards. And the mass is experiencing a gravitational force, its weight, which acts vertically downwards. Perpendicular to the fields, there's no force acting on the objects, and so they move with a constant velocity.